but we don't have a yeah, so we only got about two more minutes. <coughs> Okay, is everyone here? <laughs> if you're not here, please raise your hand. Thank you. I knew that'd be that clown corner over here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call our meeting of September the 19th to order. I would ask you please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Ms. Garcia, would you do me a favor and do the roll call, please? Eva Henry, Steve Odoricio, Jeff Baker, Here. Gleese Jones, Here. David Beacom, Here. Randy Wheelock, Sean Wood, Nicholas Williams, Here. Kevin Flynn, Jolyn Clark, Here. Roger Partridge, Laura Thomas, Ron Engels, Libby Zabo, Bob Pfeiffer, John Marriott, Bob Roth, Here. Larry Vidham, Here. David Spellman, Aaron Brockett, Sam Weaver, Margo Ramsden, Lynn Baca, Matt Johnston, Roger Hudson, Ben Price, George Teal, Jason Bauer, Tammy Mauer, Here. Catherine Heider, Laura Christman, Here. Richard Champion, Gail Christie, Rick Teeter, Here. Jimmy Nasta, Catherine Whitman, Steve Conklin, Here. Linda Olson, Here. Bill Gipp, Present. Daniel Dick, Present. Drew Peterson, Bobby Sindelar, Lisa Jones, Laura Brown, Lynette Kelsey, Here. Scott Norquist, Here. Jim Dale, Paul Hazeman, Ron Rakowski, George Lance, Mike Hillman, Stephanie Walton, Christine Berg, 
Dana Gutwein. Yes. Jerry Bean. Isaac Levy. Karina Elrod. Kyle Schlachter. Jacob Lofgren. Larry Strock. Here. Quinn Shaw. Here. Joan Peck. Here. Ashley Stolzman. Here. Connie Sullivan. Here. Joyce Palazuski. Paul Sutton. Here. Chris Larson. Jordan Sowers. Julie Mullica. John Dyack. Here. Sally Daigle. Here. Rita Dozal. Here. Jessica Sandgren. Jackie Phillips. Herb Atchison. Here. Bud Starker. I have people helping me count. Adam Zarin. <laughs> Deborah Perkins Smith. Bill Van Meter. Here. Okay, thank you. All right, I would at this time uh, entertain a motion to approve our agenda for the evening. I have a motion, do I have a second? Motion to second. All those in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. Move to the report of the chair from the Regional Transportation Committee. We will hear a little bit more about these two items uh, in shortly. But at the RTC yesterday, uh, confirmation of the aviation special interest seat uh, was confirmed, and we also had the tip share uh, project review panel representatives confirmed at the RTC. Both of those will be discussed on the agenda coming up. Uh, performance engagement, Mr. Dyack. Thank you, Chair. A um, couple items we, we had um, here earlier in the month. Uh, we approved uh, Doug Rex's First Amendment uh, to the employment agreement. Uh, we approved. We also approved the executive director's performance objectives. There are four. Um, we we did this through uh, reviewing all the feedback at staff as well as uh, board level uh, to create four objectives, and uh, we'll have more more to come on that. And uh, we also uh, talked about executive uh, policies report, which is in your informa it's informational item number fourteen, attachment F. Um, it's the, just government's governance principles. Uh, it's, it's measures to ensure uh, executive director and staff are advancing board goals and priorities in a legal, ethical, and prudent manager. And if you take a look, uh, it looks like we're doing a bang up job. Chair? Ms. Stolzman, Finance and Budget. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. So this evening we met and we authorized contracts for transport transportation demand services uh, for the construction project down on I-25 going south to hopefully get folks out of their cars and single occupancy vehicles and either into buses or ride shares. And there's some new really interesting kinds of ride shares and ways that people can carpool. So that should be exciting. Um, so we offer, authorized the contracts for the services and for the marketing for the services. And we were also presented with the draft budget for 2019. So if folks take a look in our packet, they can look at that. And if you have comments, um, we were presented the budget. We're going to ask questions and things like this between this meeting and next meeting. If you have questions, feel free to email me or the staff. And we can make sure we look at those before we take up the budget at the next Finance and Budget Committee. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next up is reported the Executive Director. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. A uh, number of items today. First, a pro uh, some programmatic notes with regards to calendar for upcoming meetings. Uh, I would draw your attention to page four in the packet, which lists uh, the calendar of future meetings. Um, so in November, uh, we are moving around some dates. That we have some conflicts um, that I'll just mention. So P&E and the board work session, we're moving that meeting from our normal, time, normal first Wednesday, November 7th to uh, November 14th. And there's a National League of Cities conference, so it's, uh, it's anticipated that there will be several board members that, uh, that, that will be attending that. So again, we're moving board work session and the performance and engagement committees from November 7th through to the 14th. The other item of note associated with that is that the two meetings will be flipped. Um, the work session will, will be at 6 o'clock, not 4. The P&E will meet at 4. And the reason for that is actually had to do with the uh, uh, availability of this room. So please note that. And don't worry, we'll give you, we'll give you plenty, of, plenty, plenty of nods to remind you. Uh, so the November board meeting and finance and budget meetings are also moving. So we're moving those from November 23rd, which is the, uh, the evening before Thanksgiving. You're welcome. And, uh, and moving that to November 28th. And those will be at their regular times. So please note those changes in November. Um, 
annual board and annual board workshop, which was held August 24th and 25th in Keystone. Um, thank you all for those that attended. We had a great turnout. We had 30, 32 directors or alternates representing 26 communities that were present. Um, all the presentations for those that were there or were not there, all the presentations can be found on the Dr. Cog website in the, in the board portal. So if you need some uh, direction on how to get that, please just let myself or Connie know, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely direct you to that. So we do have some of the posters up today, just because we have limited room in here. We haven't put them all up. Um, we received, I think almost from every jurisdiction, we received a poster this last time, just talking about a project or two that they're proud of in their communities that they've uh, either implemented over the past year or are in the planning process. So we have, what, four or five, five or six of them down there. Um, we'll be swapping those out over the next few months, so we'll rotate all of them so we, we get them all up sooner or later. Citizens Academy. Um, so Dr. Cog, we're hosting our first uh, Citizens Academy beginning uh, September 27th, and it will run for seven consecutive Thursdays. Um, and our, our inaugural class is, is made up of over uh, 30 residents from around this region. Um, and uh, we're also very thankful um, um, uh, Senator and former Dr. Cog director Rachel Zenzinger is going to open that up for us. So if you see her, thank her for her willingness to do that. So October is just around the corner, and that means um, our Way, way to Go Tober uh, event is about to kick off. Um, we have 52 employers from throughout the region who will compete to see who can shift the most single occupant vehicle trips to other modes, either that, whether that be transit, biking, carpooling, or even tele teleworking. Um, for information on who exactly is participating of those 52, um, I would encourage you to go to, if you're, cu if you're curious, to go to the waytogotober.com website. Um, we're, you know, we're, we're particularly pleased to see that we have several communities and, and agencies um, that are sitting around this table tonight who are participating. Uh, Greenwood Village, Lakewood, Littleton, North Glen, and Aurora are all participating. A um, number of state agencies, including CDOT-DEB, Thank you for participating in GoTober. I hope you're signed up. The, the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, of course, Dr. Cog is too, and we're gunning for you. So uh, good luck. You're not going to beat us. So, uh, so yesterday, um, Dr. Cog, we participated in the launch of a new statewide initiative called Lifelong Colorado. Um, and there's a handout at your table that talks a little bit about that initiative. Um, there was a press conference at the, at the Capitol yesterday. Um, so it's, it's really a partnership between the governor's office, DOLA, AARP, Dr. Cog, and other stakeholders um, from around the state participating in the launch of this event, um, as I mentioned yesterday. Um, we're, we're, I'm incredibly proud of the, of the work that my colleagues here at Dr. Cog have participated in, in setting this thing up, most notably uh, Brad, Jayla, and, uh, and Rich have been very instrumental in getting this thing off the ground. Um, and really what we're doing, we're working in, um, throughout, you know, the, the Boomer Bond initiative that we have in this region, we're, we're talking about taking that statewide as part of this initiative, so we're really proud of that. Actually, Brad is in Grand Junction this evening um, meeting with some folks out there about that, uh, that initiative and kicking off that assessment in some smaller communities. They're, we're kind of um, you know, kind of downsizing the assessment for anybody who's been through it, you know, it's... It can be pretty intense, so we're trying to right-size that for the smaller communities as well. So for more information on that Lifelong Colorado event, please, um, please check the, the flyer that's at your table. Um, I would like um, to note that, um, that th we, you know, we, speaking of the Boomer Bomb, we also are, you know, we're, we, just, we just confirmed doing one with Thornton. Is Jessica Sandra Sangren here? She's not here. No, I wanted to thank her. She was very instrumental in helping us get that off the ground. It, that's one of the larger communities we've been doing in a while, and, and, um, and uh, so we're very fortunate to do that. So, but surely, we're ticking them off one by one. And Mr. Chairman, that is all I have for this evening. Okay. Mr. Roth? So this is a little bit off topic, but it's me, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what the conversion rate is from U.S. to Canada. But what is 50 in American compared to Canada? The reason I ask is because it's the new our, executive, our executive director turns 50 tomorrow.
Thanks for opening up that wound. <laughs> you hadn't, I, I was about to ask for a moment of silence <laughs> to recognize him, and you, and, and you messed that one up. But I would like to take a minute and recognize, uh, we do have a new member from the town of Erie, Mr. Eric Dipp. Yep. Um, but most of all, I'd like to recognize one of our members who will be leaving at the last meeting from the town of uh, Superior. Ms. Rita Dozell will be resigning and leaving. So we, we appreciate all the service that Rita has done uh, here with us. So the voice of her at some of our other meetings, other committee meetings, has been very instrumental in helping us. So Rita, we do appreciate everything. We'll miss you. Okay, uh, one housekeeping item before we go much further. We have an item on the agenda, and I will be asking for you to just give you a heads up. I'm going to ask for a straw poll when we get to item 10. The reason that is going to be, in order to proceed with that, I have to be able to have 30 affirmative votes in the House seated. Otherwise, we can't take action on them. We are at about 34 people in the room right now that are eligible to vote. But if I don't have at least 30 that look like they're going to be to the positive, then we won't even discuss them tonight because I can't take action on him anyway. And that's under our charter. So I'll explain more of that when we come up, but uh, we're counting every head walking in the door as fast as they get to the door. All right, at this time, uh, we will allow up to 45 minutes for public comment. On each speaker, we will be limited to three minutes. If there are additional requests for the public to address the board, time will be allocated at the end of the meeting after we complete all other items. The chair requests that there be no public comment on issues for which a prior public hearing has been held before this board. Consent and action items will begin immediately after the last speaker. Do we have anyone in the public tonight who wishes to address the board? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Next item on the agenda is the move to approve the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? I have a so move and I have a second, I believe. Second. Motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, please signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? move on. First item up tonight will be item number nine. This is a discussion of the designating TIP Regional Share Review Panel. Mr. Todd Cottrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is attachment B, uh, the 2023 TIP Regional Share Project Review Panel. It is. I just need to talk more into it. There we go. There, there we go. Get close. Uh, so the adopted 2023 TIP policy states that the project review panel will be formed uh, to discuss, prioritize, and recommend uh, the regional share project submittals. And by the way, those are due uh, uh, this Friday at 3 o'clock. So hopefully you're all preparing and, and getting them in. Uh, the, the panel will consist of one technical staff representative from each of the eight subregions, one CDOT representative, one RTD representative, and up to five regional subject matter experts. So at the bottom of page one on attachment B lists the sub-regional CDOT and RTD representatives. Uh, there is one addition I would like to make that was made after this agenda went out. Um, this is for Jefferson County, uh, Yolinda Onnit, and she will be a Jeffco uh, alternate. At the top of page two, list the nominees for the subject matter expert representative. Um, three of these are represented, um, or, or were nominated by Dr. Cog's staff. This includes Greg Fulton with the Colorado Motor Carriers Association, uh, Pete Van Heuven with Bicycle Colorado, and Steve McCannon with the Regional Air Quality Council. There's also two other nominees listed um, that were suggested from Arapahoe County Forum. So the policy states that the panel can include up to five subject matter experts. However, um, Dr. Cog's staff is recommending that this panel include just three to keep the size limited uh, at a reasonable number. So in conclusion, the, uh, the staff recommendation would be to include uh, Pete Van Heuven, Greg Fulton, and Steve McCannon as the three subject matter experts to the project review panel. With that, the motion before you is to uh, move to approve the regional share project review panel representatives. Are there any questions that you may have? Yes, just one question. Can you go into just a little bit of detail about what the subject matter experts will be responsible for in this process? So the subject matter experts would be responsible 
uh, well, no more responsibility than any other uh, panel member. Um, they will be there to um, help prioritize and eventually nominate any of the projects to uh, our three committees, TAC, RTC, and ultimately the board. Other questions from the board? If there are no other questions, I'll entertain a motion at this time. I have a motion, and if I have a second. Yet I didn't hear one. Okay, we have one. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is carried. Okay, let's talk about the next one coming up. So here's the idea of the straw poll. We have 34 voting members present. In order to pass recommendations on any of these, it requires 30 affirmative votes. So that means if there are more than four that have uh, a position of oppose or abstention in total, we cannot vote on those actions tonight, and I'm not going to go through them if we can't vote on them. So here are we at. We have uh, 34. We have three items. We will not be discussing uh, bill number 73. That is not within the purview of Dr. Cog. The three that are up for potential consideration for Dr. Cog are ballot number 74, Proposition 109, and 110. So I'm going to take them one at a time to see about where we think we are. So if you believe that you will take a position of oppose, only for those who are thinking they may take a position for oppose, Amendment 74, please raise your hand. Now. So that was okay. So, okay. Direct. Let me let me rephrase that. <laughs> Those who will take a position of support, that's easier to count. Okay, we have enough that could potentially go forward, so we will hold that one. The next one would be Proposition 109 for those who would oppose 109. Our abstentions, either one. Okay, we will not discuss 109. You're not voting on anything. I'm just trying to get a see where we are, if we even have enough to go one way or the other. So this is not a vote. It's just a straw poll so we can figure out if we can even discuss them. Because if we don't have enough one way or the other, have you have to have 30 positive positions, either oppose or support. In voting, if you are going, in the first one, if you were going to, uh, or abstaining. Go ahead. Oppose it. Does that mean we oppose having it on the Constitution? No. No. What are we doing is saying that you would be voting as a member of this board to take a position for Dr. Cog, take one position or another, or you are abstained because maybe your municipality has not taken a position at all yet. That's where they tell you. So if you, there way you go, and if there's an abstention, but in whatever decision is made by the board has to have at least 30 people vote for that position. Affirmative. Affirmatively. You only have 34 people present. So if I get five people who say I don't either want to vote on it because I want to abstain. I think that's the only one. Uh, and they take that. That's the only one that we yeah. can't have enough to take a position yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's just abstentions. Just okay. Okay. Well, let's go back and start with Okay. Again. Go to 74. One more time, we'll try to get through it without me screwing it up. You do not have a position on 74. In other words, you will abstain because your city or your county have not taken a position that can allow you to vote, which is great. It's not a problem. Raise your hand. Hi. Right, okay. 74 will not be considered because I don't have enough people to take an affirmative position one way or the other. I got five people that can't, and I only have 34 people eligible to vote. So we have less than 30. Do the same thing with Proposition 109. If you are abstaining from this position, 
are taking a position on Proposition 109, painting only. Yes. I'm only worried about an abstention right now. So if you're going to take a position of oppose or support either, I'll, I'll come back when we vote. Because it'll still require the same number to take a position. Yes, Elise. I guess I just want to reemphasize, it doesn't have to be that your jurisdiction has taken a position. It's whether or not you oppose Dr. Cog taking a position. This is a big deal. These are really important ballot initiatives. And so I guess I would encourage people to, if your jurisdiction has a policy where you're not allowed to vote for Dr. on a Dr. Cog matter without you having um, dealt with that at your city council or county commission, so be it. But I, I guess I would encourage people not to stand in the way of Dr. Cog being active on these ballot initiatives if you can avoid that. So I just uh, encourage people to think of that in this light. I'm still going to ask the same question. Do I have people who will abstain from voting on Proposition 109? If you raise your hand. Go back to 74. <laughs> yeah, so is that, that, that a lot. if that's uh, okay, right now, I, I think I only count three. Could I, could I ask a clarifying question? So sure. my council has not decided on this. I am fine with Dr. Cog going forward on these. Okay. So you're saying that I mean, I my charter does not allow me to put my name or a letter forward for this until they've decided this, and they have not. It's been very contentious. However, I am fine with moving okay. forward if through Dr. Can, Cog if, if that's allowed. If you can vote one way or the other. That's all I care about. If you cannot, because your charter or your county rules say you have to have pr permission of your board or your council to do that, and you don't feel comfortable doing it without their consent, that's okay. But we want to honor whatever your that, that is a little. Body does. You're saying two different things. If you're asking me to back it up with a letter, I'm then not then asking I, you to I back it up with anything. That, but other I than, can yeah. vote as I do with CML, as I do with mayor's um, caucus. The, so the only I can person's do that. name that goes on the letter from Dr. Cog is me. Be, <laughs> I have enough messes in Englewood. Okay. <laughs> All right. For right now, it looks like I have less than less than five. I have less than four who are in a position of abstaining on 109. We will move that one forward for consideration. The last one is 110. Same question. You are not able to cast a vote on Proposition 110. Please raise your hand. I right. have one more member just came out. Got I got six. All right, so we have six people who cannot cast a ballot or a vote, not a ballot, a vote, one way or the other for one of ten. So we will not move that one forward for discussion. Yes, sir. Can you go back to 74, please? Yes, sir. Number 74. One more time. You cannot vote as a member of the Dr. Cog board, either in support or in opposition. You must, uh, you're abstaining for whatever reason on 74. Please raise your hand. We'll see three. So right now we have two. We will talk about 74 and we'll talk about 109. We will not talk about 110. Okay, so right now you have two items. Mr. Morrow, let's talk about 74. Yep. It's 74 <coughs> right now. Okay, so we're doing 74 and 109. All right, um, I don't think I need to go into too much detail. I think you all know the issue. 74 is the takings uh, initiative, and uh, we're just asking really for a vote of the board uh, whether or not to for have Dr. Cog support it or have Dr. Cog oppose it. So I think we would really, unless you have questions or want to have a uh, discussion, we would ask <coughs> for a motion. Is there anyone who had, does not understand 74 and would like any kind of explanation? We, if you do, we have the lobbyist here that can help explain that. All right, question, Ms. Jones. I want to put a motion on the table that Dr. Cog adopt an oppose position on Amendment 74. 
I have a motion and I have a second. Is there any discussion by any member of the authority on, Id on Amendment 74? Ms. Christman. I just wanted to bring it in the, for the record in the context of transportation. So one of the important um, transportation issues for any community is traffic, uh, ingress, and egress. And um, that is transportation. And if you gave somebody a ride in, ride out, and they wanted a full exit, you are now subject to the um, amendment. And I think it does uh, directly impact traffic. And Other comments? Ms. Jones. And I would just extend that um, further to basically every land use decision that you do or do not make as a local government that may or may not help support our goals for Metro Vision would be subject to litigation now. It would basically paralyze our ability to make decisions around land use and transportation. And again, I think I mentioned this during the work session, there have been two other states that have po uh, passed measures similar but not quite as extreme as this. The experience in Oregon was they had over 7,000 takings claims worth nearly $20 billion. They um, paid out $4 billion before they were able to get the voters to repeal it um, because of concerns about bankruptcy for um, the, the local and state governments. Ms. Malekum. Yeah, is there any way that we could elaborate on your comment? Because I haven't heard of that before. And can we also clarify, um, has CDOT taken a, a pose <coughs> or or what position has CDOT taken on this? I'm just curious. Perkins Smith, I'll let you speak for CDOT. But I think I know the answer anyway. CDOT doesn't take a position on oh. to provide information, and that isn't even one that we're providing. So, oh, Ms. Maleka, before I turn to Ms. Jones, can you clarify what you're asking to have expanded on? Yeah, yeah, and it was really just your comment of what you were talking about. I think information that she was providing would be good context for me. Ms. Jones? Uh, so, just to elaborate, it was the state of Oregon that passed a, a measure that was similar, but again, not quite as expansive as this. And uh, just to give a flavor of how um, this might impact state and local government decisions over in a three-year period over 7,000 takings claims were filed against local governments and the state government in Oregon and those totaled over or nearly 20 billion dollars worth of claims um, 4 billion of those claims were paid out before voters decided this was ridiculous and they repealed the measure so just to give you a flavor for what other states have experienced. Also to add, uh, elaborate, C CDOT's not allowed to take positions on initiatives, but the governor is, has opposed it. So is Club 20, the Denver Metro Chamber, over 100 local elected officials, city council people, and county commissioners across the state, including Mayor Southers. Um, so it's bipartisan. People realize that the impact um, is pretty cross-cutting. To add to the list of opposition, CML has also taken an opposed position. Actually, they've cried the most. Mm -hmm. Other comments or questions in regards to a position of support for the opposition of Amendment 74? Okay, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Motion is to, to oppose the to to oppose the initiative. Yes, the motion is to oppose the initiative that is being put on the ballot. One, two, three. Five wave. You can't have two now. Put out. Motion is approved on a thirty-two. Members voting to support the motion. All right, the next item up is I, uh, Proposition 109. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chair, could I ask for a clarification about our rules regarding supporting amendments? Could you remind us all uh, what those are? Because I'm not up on that. 
you have to have an affirmative majority and what we have to have is of those present voting in there we have to have 30. Yes. Actually, I'm going to ask Connie to read yeah. exactly the language. Thank you. She was prepared in case anybody asked. I am. Because it, it will come up. So your articles of association state that an affirmative vote of a majority of member representatives shall be required to adopt a resolution ballot measure. Majority of member representatives in our cases. Thank you very much. Just so you know, that's different from when we take positions on, on just um, regular, regular legislative bills. We just require a um, majority of those that are present in voting, so. All right. So Our 109 is the uh, Fix Our Dam Roads proposal for uh, bonding. And I think you know the rest about it. So um, I, since the... Um, the straw poll indicated we'd have 30 votes one way or the other, I guess. We'll see if you someone wants to make a motion on, on uh, 109. I thought you had your hand up. You didn't? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Dostman, go ahead. I, I would just like to request that we have more of a staff introduction on these so that everybody okay. understands what the different initiatives and measures are. OK. Very, very quickly, 109 simply uh, would require the, require the state to bond or borrow money to bond up to three and a half billion dollars uh, for transportation projects. I don't have the list in front of me, but the projects are actually listed in the initiative, and um, it requires the state then and the, the the legislature then to find the money within the existing budget to pay off those bonds annually over the 20-year the period uh, that they would be paid off. And that's basically what it does. And it's state highways only. And, and continue with that, it's the different, one of the other big differences between 109 and 110, there is no revenue share with the municipalities or the counties, and there is no multimodal, only for state highway projects only. Ms. Smith? like to provide some additional information. So that list, um, you can only bond up to three and a half billion, and the list actually exceeds 5.6, I believe. So just so you know, not everything on that list could actually be bonded. And to add to that, if I recall, based on the conversation we had recently with uh, CDOT, the ones that get prioritized or supported will be at the discretion of the commissioners. They will vote on that. Is that still correct, or am I wrong on that? Uh, so we're, we actually are during today and tomorrow's Transportation Commission for us, and we actually had a work session today, and there was a lengthy discussion about that. Um, 110 actually specifies that CDOT identify the list. 109 does not, and so we feel we'll have to get a reading on that as to um, what to do, because it does list the projects, but there isn't enough money for all the projects. So um, CDOT has put together kind of a straw list of what could be funded because, for example, as Elise knows, 119 is considered multimodal, and multimodal is not allowed in this. So um, that's kind of where we are. It's a little bit of an unknown. And, and I'll add that we have two attachments uh, in the board packet, one showing um, a uh, comparison of 110 and 109 that CDOT has prepared, um, and then a, a comparison of the projects that would be funded in the metro area uh, between 109 and 110 that Dr. Cog's staff has prepared. Rex? No, actually, I'm, I was just going to repeat what, what uh, Rich just said. Okay. Comments or questions? Chrisman. I'll look close to you, though. I would also just like to clarify that uh, whoever put this initiative together, I think cherry picked uh, from a very long list of uh, projects that Colorado uh, Department of Highways has put forward. And as a result of that, Arapahoe County, which really doesn't have a great list, um, <laughs> <laughs> must be the reason they were allocated nothing under this um, 
bill or initiative, and I don't think Arapahoe County is the only in what I believe was cherry picking. Other questions or comments, Ms. Jones? Back on. So Arapahoe is the, the biggest loser. Boulder County is a pretty close second. We might get a tiny bit depending on whether or not we can work on changing the 119 to be an intersection improvement. But we get next to nothing, although I do appreciate CDOT's efforts on this. There are winners and losers, big time. Other comments? Ms. Dolsman, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, I would just like to talk about 109 and 110 together. So we're, a, we're an organization that focuses on aging and transportation, and transportation is a big portion of what we do. Um, we spend a lot of time talking about the lack of funding and all of the projects that need to be done. And many times we've talked about that there needs to be a new revenue stream to be able to fund additional transportation projects. So the city of Louisville almost never takes a position on anything because we you know, try to be judicious so that we keep our so we keep it clear that we're not just taking a position on everything, but we thought it was important enough to take a position on both 109 and 110 because it is complicated when you just glance at them if you're not you know, in, in the war fighting all the time. And we think it's important that the voters understand that one of these measures is really productive for helping transportation in Colorado, all over Colorado, and one of them is not actually productive. So we took a position against 109 and for 110 um, I think it would be really powerful for this organization, Dr. Cog, to take a position on them so people understand that we are committed to transportation solutions and we're not just looking to complain that transportation's bad, traffic's bad. Um, we actually want to fix the problem. So I would hope that we take a position against 109 and 4110. Yeah, the other comments? So at this time, I will open the floor up for a motion if someone would like to make it. Jones. I would make a motion that uh, Dr. Cog take an opposed position on Proposition 109. I have a second. I have a second. Comments or questions on the recommendation for an opposed position on Proposition 109? The motion is to oppose all those in opposition to the recommendation by the board for an opposed position. No, I know. I know. It, I know. <laughs> Favor the motion. Okay, I'm trying to count the least number of hands. Is what I'm trying to do. No, no. All right. So if you're in favor of the motion to oppose, please raise your hand. Or opposing. Okay. For opposing. Yeah. One, two. Okay. Motion fails on uh, lack of a majority. And since we already had enough that we 